Hello, this is Frida Liu and you're watching The Shift Asia. According to Department of Statistics Malaysia, only 39.2% of the Malaysian workforce comprises women when most of them are highly qualified graduates. 34.2% leave their jobs for childcare duties, while 60.2% do not seek career advancement or employment upon graduation for home and care responsibilities. So childcare duties often raise flags in the home front where women are expected to take on the responsibility, thus leaving what was a double income household with a single income household. And while Malaysia needs 39,000 registered childcare centres to sustain this demand, we only have 4,000 centres uh, officially registered. For women to have the option to join or rejoin the workforce, a childcare solution is imminent. Enter Kitty Care. Kiddo Care! <laughs> With this innovative solution, and joining me is founder and CEO uh, Nadir Yusuf, and also old friend. Uh, and I remember talking to you about this mm -hmm. before you started this, yeah. and like, what were you planning to do? And I understand because you've got kids, and I've got a kid as well. And I think what's interesting about uh, your business is that it aligns to SDG five, which is gender equality, mm. uh, SDG eight, economic mm. growth and decent work, and SDG three, good health and well being. That's right. Um, Tell me how so, okay, so we know gender equality, we're probably getting more women involved, but mm. how else are the other other SDGs uh, encapsulated? Of course, Frida, when we talk about, you know, empowering women, mm -hmm. right? Empowering women and getting her back into the workforce, then we look into skilling her. So there are two parts of this, right? One is that group of women who will come in and work as our caregivers. Mm. Now, they're going to be skilled, right? That's uh, basically also, um, you know, helping them develop the skill and knowledge into the field, mm -hmm. right? And this is very critical because they are addressing children, right. young children children and when we talk about addressing young children it's making sure that they are well fed right. that they are well taken care of uh, well nurtured educated this will also mean contributing to the mm. to the upbringing of the child mm. contributing to the education level of the child nurturing of the child's character and behavior and values right and that's setting that kind of foundation for every right. child in terms of moving forward so that's also impacting children or the young lives of nations, mm. right? Um, and that's one end. And then empowering the other women to go back to their workforce, right? right? Or even start economic, you know, ventures, uh, entrepreneurship and whatnot. So it is really a circular model. When we talk about SDGs, we cannot help but think about how it's really interrelated, mm. you know? Uh, bringing women out of poverty by making them our caregivers and then supporting the other women to go back to work, maybe even become entrepreneurs, creating more right. job opportunities for other women out there, making sure that their families thrive, children are well taken mm. care of, you know. So these are how it is all interrelated. Right. Are, are your caregivers uh, mostly women or, are you, or is it just for women at the moment? Oh, all right. So families, of course, everyone. Mm. But very happy to share with you that since last year, mm. since late last year, we have already been introducing our manis. Oh, yes. our manis. So huh? we have men also participating in the care work now, which I feel is so important, Frida, yeah. because, you know, we keep on talking about, you know, how do we get men more involved yes. in taking care of the care responsibilities? Right. But the challenge that we have right now is that, you know, yes, we have men who are also very interested. They come in, they are skilled, they are trained just the same way, but then we also have the market that's not really ready to yes. accept them. Mm. So, yeah, so, but I know, but it's good to introduce them because I also believe that, of course, later on when they become fathers, raising a family is the equal responsibility of both of course, parents. Of so course. we've got to change the gender stereotypes on our side, right? right? Now, um, you know, since inception, you've empowered close to 12,000 women uh, to be uh, professional givers. Uh, what is the demographic of most of your caregivers? And, you know, uh, yeah, what is the demographic? I think largely most of our caregivers, these women are from the age of 22 mm -hmm. uh, until 35. Okay. So these are majority of our caregivers, right? Uh, but uh, so in terms of racial demographic, yeah. I think we're looking at about 70% Malays mm -hmm. and 30% others. Okay. Right? Which is the breakdown of the country. The breakdown of the country. Right. But what's also very interesting is that majority of our caregivers 
already possess either diploma or degree. Right. And they're choosing this uh, as something that not only supplements their income, but we've seen that they move into actual caregiving job as a full-time career right. as they move into the system. right? So they'll probably come in first mm. and, and uh, do this on a part-time basis, you know, while they are studying mm. or they're looking in between jobs. But once they, you know, start their family, their own little family, mm. then this becomes their primary source of income right. because it is flexible, they can manage their own children, their own little families, but earn good, decent income with Kido Care. Okay. But what's very also other important areas to look at is the skill that they acquire during the caregiving mm. job also contributes into the development of their own children at home. So this becomes a career choice for many women right now. Right. So, uh, what kind of training do you provide for your caregivers mm. and uh, how do you, you assure, I think most important, sound mind. They always oh, yes. worry, right? Yes, <laughs> like, now we're also mothers <laughs> here, kan? So, before we started, we have to make sure that, you know, okay, we've got the training in place. So, the first thing is they have to go through the childcare, basic childcare training. Right. And this childcare training is uh, modeled over a few uh, different uh, programs, right? right? The KAP is one of them and KAP is the required certification for childcare centers. Right. So, we took that, we modeled that, but we fit that into a home environment because what we're doing is taking care of children into their in yeah. their houses right? right and also other outdoor uh, areas lah. so basic childcare is covered and under basic childcare it is also um, you know, a, a lot of uh, focus is given into understanding the child's development milestone mm. and what kind of activity should the carers do in terms of, you know, helping them to achieve those milestones. Um, a lot revolving around activities around the house because it's also a lot of character building and engagement with the child. Uh, they learn uh, they learn and acquire knowledge on, on uh, children's psychology and how to speak with empathy, right. uh, communication, professional communication with with the parents and whatnot. Uh, apart from that, they also go through um, first aid and uh, pediatric first aid, okay. as well as um, CPR. Right. Uh, very also targeted, specializing on children, uh, safety around the house, safety outdoor. Uh, they go through that. Um, and then over and beyond that, we put them through the psychometric assessment, their security background check. So those are the, some of the mandatory uh, training and programs right. that we put them through. Um, and now we've also introduced the special needs care okay. uh, for all our caregivers. Although they learn on the basic level because it is also important when they go into the houses, they don't know what kind of child they will be attending right. to. So they are also put into the uh, special needs care as well. Okay, so this is the kind of training, right? Mm. And, and how many children uh, have you cared for and families you've supported since you started in... Uh, oh, 2019. 2019, I 2019 think. okay. 2019, so we've grown. I think uh, we've supported more than 70,000 families mm. now in Malaysia. Uh, attending to more than 80,000 children, uh, you know, through all these families. Okay, is it easy? I think, is there more, is there more demand than supply? Actually, uh, we're, we're quite steady okay. in terms of our demand and supply. The only challenge is that because it is still an on-demand platform and many of our caregivers uh, also those preferring to work on certain times. Yes. So yes, there will be some gaps during certain hours of the day. Right. But I think we're quite balanced. But the challenge is always, you know, which one do we grow first? Right, mm. okay, which one do you grow <laughs> first, right? And, and uh, when you talk about babysitting services, what kind of babysitting services do you offer? It's not just, just mm. there are many... Uh, areas oh, yes, yes, yes. Into. I think we've, we've also grown in terms of, you know, we understand now how children evolve, they, are, they are evolve and our services mm. also evolve. So we started off with uh, hourly babysitting and then we've uh, moved on to also having the overnight services. Okay. Uh, we have our travel nannies, ah. the nannies who actually travel with the parents. We have our pop-up nanny services. Those pop up? Are, pop up! So we pop up here in <laughs> Alfreda, we can pop up anywhere. <laughs> okay. Uh, and this is very popular with right. like, event organisers, where organizers, ah. training providers, corporate organizations. Uh, and what we do is that we, we come in, we bring in our mobile, you know, pop-up uh, facilities and then we have a group of nannies who will create activities with the children. So their parents can go for training, can go for team building, weddings, whatever it is, but we have our, our nannies taking care of, of the children in groups, right? right? Uh, but we've also evolved to also making sure that the carers can actually earn different types of income. So we've mm. introduced 
introduced play groups, we've introduced robotic trainings, many other things. Okay. So at the core of it is always, you know, it's not just impacting the families, but how do we create opportunities for our caregivers right. so that they can grow and, and earn more. It's so interesting, you travel nanny, and I, I can imagine the hourly babysitter is like the parents are watching, seeing whether they trust them and then, okay, then we'll, then we'll extend the hours, right? Yeah. Are you available throughout Malaysia? Yes. Someone asked me that, I was in Sarawak, and then mm. I said, I said, I've heard them, I don't know if they're here, but you know. Uh, we've recently introduced our service in Sabah, mm -hmm. but uh, in the major cities. Lah. So we have we have some services, limited services currently in Kota Kinabalu okay. and also in Kuching. Okay. But other parts we don't have yet, okay. we're still expanding. But otherwise, in Peninsular Malaysia, we're available everywhere. All right, mm. okay. Um, and it, so are you encouraging university students to try this out? Of course, okay. of course. I think it's uh, very interesting for university students to come in. Uh, actually, it's quite suitable for them too, even, especially if right. they are women. Uh, it gives them flexibility in terms okay. of, you know, uh, working time. Working and they can also hours. decide location, right? They can decide their own location. They can decide their own duration of work. But what's more important is that the skill that they acquire and, and actually, you know, working with children also help to develop them into yeah. you know people with more empathy right. and the skill that they will use throughout their life anyways right would you hire foreigners i mean if they're a foreign student for example mm. do you mm. hire foreigners so for now we are not hiring foreigners yet because okay. one of the our requirement is to go through the pdrm background check so we will need to look into their history here okay uh, okay so that's the only the, reason why that's we're not the, doing it yet. and you want them to be thoroughly checked anyway. yes of course, of course. Until we overcome that. Uh, and what's next for, for Kiddo Care? Oh, there's a, a whole lot of things that we're working on right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've introduced our elderly care services as well. Okay. Last year. So we are still in the process Old of... Care. Old care. Okay. <laughs> we say the popo care lah, kan? The grandma and okay. the grandpa care. So we've introduced that last year, mm. uh, and we're trying to expand that. Um, looking into you know making sure that we beef up on the SOPs and right. like that. Uh, but we're also uh, shifting ourselves uh, to becoming a family care platform. Okay. So that means you know looking into the needs of families. Children are also evolving as they age. Right. So you know more education more nurturing activities. Uh, we've also introduced our mind care program that looks into, uh, you know, your mental health and, and well-being. So we've got counsellors and psychologists programs around those areas to help moms and also our caregivers. So really, you know, bringing ourselves to look into that whole family care services and right, products. Right, because it, it really takes a village. It does. It does take it a village really in does. all these different areas in raising yes. a child. Child. And it's not just about attending to the child, but yeah. the mother has to be, you know, prime and, you know, be able to have her own time, her own, uh, you know, wellness in order for her to then come back and, and help the children. Like the fathers will have to know, you know get the skills. Uh, so I think indeed, uh, you know, it really does take a village to then grow the child and the village around them. Right. So it's been five years. Uh, congratulations thank for, you so for, much. for doing this. And, uh, and uh, here's more, to, uh, many more years of success. Yes, thank uh, you. I've been speaking to Nadira Yusuf from Kiddo Care and this is The Shift Asia.